Today I'm working with Elvis. This is episode two of his basic obedience. You can see how much he's progressed from episode one and how our training is going to adjust to keep up with his progression. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so we start with the climb command and you can see I said climb and he ran ahead of me in order to jump on that platform. That shows us that he's starting to understand the verbal command of climb and he doesn't need the physical cue as much as he needed before. This is also going to give us the opportunity to start spacing out our rewards. Remember in the beginning when you start training your dog, you're using continual reinforcement. You're rewarding every single behavior. But as your dog gets better, then you can start to space out the rewards. And you're gonna see me do that in this video. Also, when we're spacing out our rewards, we like to give the dog verbal feedback in the early stages. Meaning, when I start to no longer give him a reward for every behavior, I'm not just going to start telling him commands and not rewarding him, him at all. I'm going to give him some sort of verbal feedback. I'm going to let him know, good job, you're on the right track, keep it up. And then after he does a couple commands, then I'm going to mark and reward. Come. So right there, he was doing a nice climb stay and then we're jumping right into a come when called. I like to wait till the dog is sitting directly in front of me in order to mark and reward that behavior, but you can call a dog to you and jump right into a new command if you like. Down. There we go, another great example of Elvis showing us he's starting to learn these commands. I told him down, I did not have to give him a physical cue, I did not have to lure him into the down position, I did not have to use a leash pressure, he laid right down on his own. Again, showing us that he's starting to understand the commands on the verbal alone, and that's really what we want. Three. So we use the terminal marker there. Spin. Three. Right there, I did a spin command. Spin command doesn't really have too much to do with obedience, but what it does do is it kind of breaks up the training a little bit and it makes it more fun. This is known as a power-up. I posted a video about these the other day. This is one out of three that I like to use, and it's very easy to teach a dog, and again, most dogs enjoy it, most dogs have fun with it, and it makes the training more enjoyable for the dog, which again, makes the dog more engaged, and therefore they learn more quickly. Excellent. Nice work, buddy. Sit. Okay, right there. This is a perfect example of what you need to do if you give your dog a command and they don't do the behavior right away. Notice a couple things. One, I did not repeat the command. I said sit. He didn't sit right away and I went right into applying leash pressure, which is one of his physical cues to get him to sit. And I simply waited till he did the behavior. Once he did the behavior, I let him know that he was correct. I released the pressure on the leash and we go right back into training. Try not to get into the bad habit of repeating the command, so saying it multiple times times or not following through. If you're using formal commands, sit down, come, heal, any one of those, if you give your dog a command, make sure you follow through. Remember, dogs are creatures of habit. If you make them perform the behavior every single time you give them the, the command, then that's going to become their default. You give them a command and they do it. So make sure you always follow through if you give your dog a formal command. Heal. Good boy. Yes. I'm also starting to incorporate the heel command for Elvis. Not just walking in heel position, but finding the heel position. Heel is a position in which the dog needs to maintain. If I'm not moving, the dog needs to be on my left side, sitting next to me. If I'm walking, the dog must walk and maintain that same position. It's always important to define what commands we are asking our dogs to do. And when we have a clear definition, it makes it easier for us to get the dog to understand what we want. So when I'm teaching a dog to find the position, I give them the command and then I use my luring with the food and I guide them into that position. Once they're in the position, I mark and I reward. Yes. Yes. Okay, what I'm doing right now is I'm having him maintain heel position, looking up at me because this is now a heel stay, and I'm using my continuation marker, marking the behavior, rewarding him, letting him know this is correct, hold this position, and I'm gonna keep paying you for that. Down. Okay, you noticed right there, I said down, and then I lured him into the down position. 
I didn't wait for him to do it on his own. And the reason for this is because Elvis likes to turn and face me when I give him the down command. So if I was just to give him the down command and I did not help him with the luring, he probably would have turned his body, laid down and looked up at me, which really isn't that big of a deal when it comes to basic obedience. But I do like a dog to go straight into the down position when I give him the command. So that's why I'm still using luring to help him when he is in heel position going into the down command. Dogs are very situational. If your dog learns to lay down only when he's directly in front of you, then that's where he's going to want to be when you ask him to down. If you're far away and you tell him down, he's going to come close to you. If he's in heel position, you tell him down, he might turn and face you to lay down. So we have to show him the commands in each position we want the dog to perform. No. Okay, right there, he broke the position. I said one no, and I placed him back into the position. Remember, this is how we start teaching our dogs stay. We give them the command, once they're in the position, we can use the continuation marker, yes, letting them know they did it correctly and they're going to get a reward, or we don't have to say anything, or we can give them verbal feedback, verbal praise, like, good job, that's what I wanted you to do, but you're gonna have to stay in that position without having to say stay. If the dog breaks the position, we say one no, then we take the leash, we use the leash pressure, and we place the dog back into the position. What this does is it teaches our dogs what they need to do when we say no. Often we say no and we want our dogs to either stop what they're doing or to go back into the previous position, but we don't teach them how to do that. And when we use this technique, we say no and we use the leash pressure to put them back in that position. It teaches them exactly that. So when we say no, our dogs will self-correct by either stopping what they're doing or going back into that previous position. And again, that's exactly what we want them to do. So that's what I did right there. Yes. Okay, right here, I'm having him maintain the downstay and I'm using the continuation marker to give him feedback without releasing him from the position. So instead of walking away and saying, stay, stay a bunch of times, I simply walk away. If he breaks, just like earlier, we would say one no and put him back in the position. But right now I wanna give him feedback, let him know he's doing it correctly by walking around, saying yes, coming back and rewarding him. Another important note is that I say yes before I start to walk back to the dog. Anytime we're using verbal, remember the power of the verbal comes from what it predicts so the yes means I'm going to come reward him if I start walking towards him he's gonna start thinking here comes the reward and if I say yes as I'm walking towards him then he's not really going to pick up that yes or that marker so look at it the same as changing lanes while you're driving you turn on your signal then you change lanes we say yes then we go and reward our dog yes you can also tell that he's conditioned to the markers because when I use the marker, he gets excited. You can see his tail start to wag. He knows he's about to receive a reward. And again, this helps us with that communication to clearly and effectively let our dogs know what it is we want. Remember, dog training is really about being able to communicate with our dogs in a timely manner when they're right and when they're wrong and giving them a clear path to success. Climb. No. Okay, right there, another great example of him making a mistake and jumping off of the climb. I asked him to go into the climb. I did not use the terminal marker, so I did not say free, and I did not release him from the position. So he broke the climb state by jumping off. And you can see I say one no, and I place him back onto the climb. Yes. And there we go, I said yes. And then I turned, walked back to him, and I gave him a reward. Off. All right, here we go. I gave him the off command. Off command is something really important to teach, especially if you're teaching your dog a climb or a place. And I highly recommend teaching a climb or place command. It's a command you'll love once you really get it down and your dog is able to perform at any time because it gives you a place to put your dog without having to worry about them. Maybe if you're in the kitchen and you're cooking a meal or something like that, you don't want your dog on in the kitchen while you're cooking so you can put them on a climb command and when we teach them the climb command we always want to teach them the opposite so coming off of the climb command and this is something that i also use for my own dogs if maybe they jump on some furniture that i don't want them to jump on i have a clear command that tells them i don't want you on here go ahead and jump off go to your bed or something like that so it's really important to teach an off command Sit. 
down. Yes. Come. Okay, with the come when called, you notice how I bring my hands to the center of my body because I want the dog to come in center. I talk about this before in one of my other videos, reward placement. If I brought my hand down to either side to reward on my right side or my left side, then that's going to become the default position that he goes to. So by making sure my hands come center, that gets him to come in center and sit directly in front of me. Good, very good. Spin, free. Heel. Right yes. there, we're doing another heel command. Good boy. Also notice with the heel command, I am guiding the dog by stepping back with my left foot, using the luring or that power steering, guiding him around in the heel position. Once he gets into heel position, that's when I mark and reward. He doesn't get any of the food when I'm luring him into the position until he finishes what it is that I'm asking for or until after I say yes. Sometimes I will mark and reward a behavior for the dog putting in effort. Sometimes if we have dogs that have lower levels of perseverance, then they might give up before they get to that completed position. And if that's the case, I'm gonna reward the dog for putting in effort. I'm gonna let them know, if you keep working, you're going to eventually get the reward. And then as they get better, then we can get it to the point where they're getting all the way into the actual position we want them to perform. So keep that in mind. Good. Yes. I'm also teaching him to maintain the heel position. So as he's sitting there, I'm using the continuation marker. Yes, reward. Yes, reward. Letting him know, I want you to stay in this position. This is where you need to be. And if you continue to do this, I will pay you for it. Sit. No. Okay, you may have noticed that he was already in the sit command when I said sit. The reason why I did that, instead of saying a new word such as stay, I simply use a command that the dog already knows, which is sit. So I say sit and then I walk away, basically letting him know I want you to stay in this position. Even though we were just doing heel, now I want you to do a sit stay. Now he got a little bit confused, he got up, so I placed him back into the sit, no big deal, and we move forward with the training. So if I am leaving a dog in a position, instead of saying stay, I simply repeat the command that I want the dog to be in. No. Yes. Again, you can see I spin him around Sit. into heel position. Once he's in the position, mark and reward. This is an exercise that I call solidifying the heel position. I put the dog in heel position, I reward him for it, I repeat the sit command, I step away, then I call them back into heel position again from different angles and different uh, positions around the dog. And this gets him to really understanding of how to find heel from any given position. He made a mistake there, no big deal. Say one no, use the leash pressure to guide him back into no. the position. Heel. And there we go, another heel. Notice when we're giving him the heel command, yes. we are having his head come around and in. We want it to come inwards, not outwards, because a dog will always find the quickest way from point A to point B. And if we have their head spin inwards, then what ends up happening is if they're sitting directly in front of you and you tell them heel, their back end will simply turn and they will go directly into heel position. And this is something that we want the dog to do. This is known as a flip finish. Not as important in basic obedience, but it is something that people really like their dogs to be able to do in competition obedience. And it is really cool if you get it to that point where your dog simply flips into heel position. Down. No. Okay, so you notice he struggled a little bit there. No big deal, we stay calm, we help him out if we need to. Once he's in the position, we mark and reward. Also, during the early stages of training, if you're still in the first month or so working with your dog, we wanna always give them that opportunity or the ability to make mistakes and try again. So if they make a mistake, we're not going to punish them for making a mistake, but rather we're gonna say, that was incorrect, but let me show you what is correct. This is going to help increase their confidence 
and it's going to speed up their learning process. Climb. Very good. And again, right there, I'm using verbal praise, so I let him know, good job, this is what I want you to do. He made a mistake, he came off of the climb, so I said one no, and I used my body language to communicate to him that I wanted him to go back to the climb. Off. All right, so right there, I gave him the off command. He didn't come off right away. So remember, anytime we're giving our dogs a command, we wanna follow through and we don't wanna repeat the command a bunch of times. So now I just walk over to him, I use the leash pressure, I get him off of the climb, and then I let him know, good job. So again, he's not going into the sit right away, so we're going to use that physical cue and we're gonna wait till he performs it correctly. If you are using leash pressure, remember the two important rules when implementing leash pressure. Number one, once that pressure is turned on, it cannot be turned off until the dog complies. And number two, once the dog complies, the pressure must immediately be turned off. Good boy. Heel. A little bit more of the heel command. Yes. Okay, right there you may have noticed that once he came close to heel position, I stepped into his heel position. This is something that I'm not really going to worry about too much when I'm working with a pet, pet obedience, but if you are doing competition obedience, this is not something you wanna do. You don't wanna guide the dog into heel. The dog doesn't go directly into heel and simply adjust yourself into the dog's heel position. If I was doing this with a dog that I wanted to compete with, precision obedience, then I would have simply used the food, guided the dog into my heel position without adjusting into the dog's heel position. So keep that in mind if you do want more precision level obedience. Heel? Yes. Heel? All right, so on that last one, and I like to do this when I'm really getting a dog to understand maintaining the heel position, also coming into a sit when we stop. I, I like a dog to have an automatic sit when halted. So what I did right there was I said heel, then my hand came up guiding the dog as I walked, guiding the dog into a sit and then rewarding him for that. I want the dog, if I'm saying heel and the food comes up in front of the dog's face, what ends up happening after enough of these, you say heel and boom, your dog looks up at you as you're walking. And this can help develop a focused heel, but it also helps the dog really pay attention to the position that they're in. If you have a dog that is uh, one of those dogs that tends to get distracted often on a walk, what's that over there, is that a squirrel, I wanna pee on this rock, whatever it is, if you have the, the dog focusing on you and focusing on maintaining heel position, they're not able to do all those other behaviors you may not want them to do, such as barking at dogs or chasing squirrels, things like that. So dogs cannot multitask. So if we make them focus on one thing, they're not able to focus on something else. And I like to do that when I'm working on the heel command. Yes. Down. Now this time instead of using the food you can see I tried doing the leash pressure and with the leash pressure He's starting to curve out a little bit as he goes to lay down instead of going straight down the way that I would prefer Again, not a big deal if they do that if you want to fix something like that It's always better just to go back a step and rework what it is you want them to do Come Sit Down Breathe very good. Right there, I just gave him a few commands, come sit down, he performed all of them. Then I gave him the terminal marker, releasing him, and then giving him a reward. Very good. Spin, three. Excellent. Throwing in sit. another spin command, one of those power-ups, making it more Very fun. Very good. Climb. Up. Down. command Very and you can give the dog a heel, heel. command from a distance because remember heel is a position yes heel yes down right there he started to get up so one no place him back in the position and go right back into training sit come on come on good Okay, so what happened there? 
I gave him a sit command, but I gave him the command from a distance. When we start giving our dogs commands from different positions, it changes what it is we're asking them to do in the dog's mind. If I always teach my dog sit and down and stand or whatever the commands I want them to perform when they're directly in front of me, when I give them a command, they're going to want to seek out that same position before they perform the command, or they may even get confused because they're not in that position when you ask them to do the command. So if you want to start giving your dogs command from a distance, you have to start teaching them. So I can implement my physical cue the same way I did before by walking towards a dog to give the physical cue, just like I did right here. I said, sit. Then I started to walk towards him. I used the luring. I gave him a little bit of coaching, like, come on, buddy, you can do it. He sits up, I mark and reward. If I really want a dog to understand commands from a distance, often I'll use a climb or a place to have the dog maintain a position while I'm giving them commands. Or we can also have a training partner who helps us with it. And I have other videos on that as well, but we have to teach them that the commands are implemented from any position by showing them how to perform those behaviors from those positions by implementing the physical cue. So don't get discouraged if your dog knows sitting down when they're directly in front of you, but you say down from a distance and they don't perform it. You have to teach them that. Climb. Good boy. Right there, I had him go on a different platform for the climb. I like to get a dog generalized to obedience commands, and what that means is they understand it in any position. So if I took him to a new location and I said climb, even though his climb bed is not at that new location, if there was another climb bed or some other elevated platform, he would still jump up on that platform and perform that behavior. And we have to get a dog generalized to commands, and each dog is going to be a little bit different, but on average, usually around eight or nine of a given let's say the climb command, eight or nine different climb platforms, you teach him to perform on all those, now he's generalized and anytime you tell him to climb on elevated platform, he's going to go ahead and do it. Same thing with locations, eight different locations before the dog performs perfectly in every single location. So just keep that in mind when you're working with your dog. If you only train your dog in your living room and then you take your dog outside and your dog's not performing the behaviors right away, it's because they're not generalized to the training. You have to work with them in multiple locations for the dog to understand, okay, these commands apply everywhere. Yes, no. Right there, he broke the position. When I said yes, he got excited. Yes. A no can override a yes. So if you tell your dog yes and you're going to reward them and they break the position, don't reward them because then you'll be rewarding them for breaking the position. Instead, you say no, you fix the mistake, and then you can go ahead and reward them. Very good. Up. Sit. Come. Spin. Yeah, buddy, no. So right there, I dropped the piece of food. He tried going for the food and I did not allow him to get access to it. If you have a leash and you are working with your dog and you drop some food and they go for it, it's good to stop them and not allowing them to pick up the food because it become a really big distraction. You'll have a dog who's constantly checking the ground to see if they can find some free food. Now there's going to be times where you drop food and you don't have a leash in your hand and the dog picks it up off the ground. It's not the end of the world, but it is a really good practice to do your best not to allow your dog to pick up food from the ground. No, sit, yes. Spin, yes. Sit, down. Climb, sit, down. Right there was something very subtle. You may have caught it or you may not have caught it. He did a bunch of commands without any help with a physical cue. He's doing it really nicely. Then I tell him down and I noticed that he wasn't picking it up really the way that I wanted him to. So I used a physical cue to help give him a little bit of guidance. And I did that simply by stepping my left leg forward towards his leash. Because one of the things I'll do if the leash is dragging on the ground and I tell the dog to down, I'll step on the leash and I'll slide my foot back, which will give the dog a little bit of a cue and they'll go into the down command. And that's what I did right there in order to help him out a little bit. Yes. Very nice. 
Test. Excellent work, buddy. Come. And there we go. There's a great training session. If you can shoot for one or two training sessions every day with your dog, you'll be ahead of most people. And the sessions don't have to be long. 10 to 15 minutes is perfect. And even if you're only getting one session a day or even one session every other day, if you stay consistent, you're going to get really nice results and you're going to have a really nice obedient dog. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you wanna see this training session without the commentary, simply continue watching the video and it'll be playing here in a few seconds. Come on. Down. Free. Very good. Spin. Free. Excellent. Nice work, buddy. Sit. Heel. Good boy. Yes. 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 Down. No. Yes. Yes. Climb. No. Yes. Good boy. Very good. Yes. Sit. No. No. Heel. Yes. Yes. Down. No. Good. Climb. Very good. No. Good boy. Heel. Yes. Heel. Yes. Heel. Yes. Down. Good boy. Come. Sit. Down. Very good. Spin. Free. 
Excellent. Sit. Creep. Very good. Climb. Up. Down. Heel. Good. Good job. Very nice. Very nice. Heel. Good. Yes. Heel. Yes. Down. Good. Rope. Climb. Good boy. Yes. No. Yes. Very good. Come, spin, yes, good job buddy, no, no, sit, yes, spin, yes, sit, down, climb, sit, down, Yes. Excellent work, buddy. Come.